Hello everybody, it's Andrea and it's time for another trip through a Marilyn scrapbook. This is volume 8. Once again we are now back to the uh, photo albums from W.H. Smith's, which will go on for quite a while now, although the style will change because they changed the way they did them. So let's have a look. So hey, Christie's auction time I think. <laughs> well, volume 1. So again we have a lovely picture of Marilyn to start. This is the ballerina sitting by Milton H. Green. And again, we are on some uh, articles from the internet. This one was from the Electronic Telegraph and is titled What Marilyn Left Behind. Um, basically, it's about the Christie's archive and starts uh, with, with the uh, paragraph In a vault beneath Manhattan, Meredith Etherington Smith spent two months with the ghosts of Marilyn Monroe, cataloguing for Christie's a treasure trove of the star's clothes, scripts and household goods, which are previewed here in a world exclusive. This was a quite a, this was like four or five pages long, so as you can see, actually it's six pages long, but there was only that one photo of her uh, wearing the Kennedy dress. Uh, again, this is the Sacramento Bee. Monroe Collection really reveals a legend's personal side. Again, it's about the Chrissy's um, auction. And the only thing about these newsprint ones, um, non-newsprint ones from the internet is they don't have a lot of photographs on them, whereas obviously the real ones do. Um, on the next page again, uh, this is from the New York Post. And again, this is about Marilyn and the auction um, and about a girl whose father once met Marilyn on Fire Island when she was there with Strasbourg's. Oh look, real newspaper. <laughs> Uh, this was from the Shropshire Star because I used to live in the West Midlands and uh, it has some photographs of uh, some of the items up for sale. So there's the Kennedy dress there, up here is uh, some of her coats and this is the stamp art from when we had the US stamp come out. It's goodbye Norma Jean at Marilyn Sellar. <coughs> And this is about um, the display at Christie's in New York. And it also gives you the London dates and Paris and Los Angeles and so on. On the next page, again, it's more about the auction. And this was from The Times. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And this is the Pucci collection of tops and dresses that she had when she died. Pucci was one of her preferred designers. Monroe Sirens dress for sale, and again, more about the Kennedy dress than anything else, but a nice little picture of the Pucci wall. On the next page, again, this is CNN Interactive, Christie's Previews Marilyn Monroe Collection. This one actually does have a few pictures on it. So we obviously have the Kennedy dress, uh, a pair of her earrings, and then over here, in this sort of corner, we'll just zoom in a bit, we have uh, some a line from one of her scripts. I can't see which one it is, sadly. The Eternity Band from Joe DiMaggio and the Black Dress Wall. On that one. So we'll just zoom that back out so we can go to the next page. So this is where we take a little break from the Christie's auction. Um, the stage of television today, 29th of July, 1999, Insignificance. A significant clash of icons, Sharon Small and Aaron Cordner in Insignificance at the Minerva Theatre, Chichester. And then we have the Weekly News, which is a British weekly newspaper that's published. And Marion's featured on the cover several times in recent years. And... Um, so this one is Auction of Monroe Memorabilia set to fe fetch millions. This is from July 31st, so a little while yet. Again, just telling you about the, the dress and the Kennedy dress. And... and then inside there was also this article, The Most Tragic Heroine of All. Marilyn ultimately paid the price for, pain, for, her, for fame. So I can't speak. Um, Century of Glamour, there was a lot they did a series on female stars, glamorous stars, and obviously Marilyn had to be in there. On the next page we have a little thing from the Sunday People. 
uh, which is 20th Century Heroes. So we've got obviously Marilyn and we've got Jerry Halliwell and, and Nikki Larder, who was a race driver. Um, a little bit about the assassination of Marilyn Monroe by uh, Donald H. Wolf and a piece where he says you, where you can buy a copy of the Star's autopsies reports, which you can. Back to some internet articles. Monroe's wedding suit to be auctioned. This was from the Las Vegas Sun. And this is just an article about the dress that she married um, Joe DiMaggio in. We'll go on the block at Sotheby's in September. Uh, she gave it to Amy Green, I believe, after she wore it. And again, New York Post. Marilyn's Jody wedding suit will go on the blog. So again. And this one actually has a bit about Amy Green on here. About her unpacking it and... And so on. And what happened to it then. Back to the Christie's auction. Thursday, August 26th, Some Like It Lot from the Mirror. The red dress, scarlet orangey dress that she wore. She had a lot of copies of these dresses made. She had um, a red one, an orange one, one of which was worn in the Milton Green sessions. She had a grey one, which she wore during the making of the Misfits. And there was even a whitey pink one, which was in Let's Make Love. The ring from Joe jeans and one of her poochie blouses and a hat and some shoes and then on this side we have it's goodbye Norma's jeans original and again we have the JFK dress it's part of this same article um, allegedly the dress she wore to sing happy uh, sing it to the troops in Korea although that is not actually the one because the dress they sold at, sold at Christie's was Marilyn's it was black the dress she wore in uh, Korea was plum and had a matching bolero jacket and is owned by an Australian collector who I don't know who I do know his name and then on the next page we have the National Enquirer whoops these stars really stepped in it and this is about the forecourt at Grauman's Chinese Theatre it's now called something else again and then it was man's then it went back to Grauman's then it's something else now so we got Marilyn Jimmy Durante uh, Shirley MacLaine and, and Jack Lemon and Mickey Rooney about when they did it. The next page is an article from the Weekend um, magazine, which is a week a magazine that is published on a Saturday or was on a Saturday, I believe. Yeah, for the Daily Mail, and it's titled "Marilyn: The Glamour and the Greed," and it again is about the Christie's auction, um, and this is uh, again Donald Wolf. She used the eye rolling sigh. So we have this full article. It's photocopied because I actually kept the magazine because I think she was on the cover. There's pictures of Marilyn and of course her piano. Next one is Marilyn, a star who won't lose her lure. For some reason I didn't actually write what magazine it's from, although I think it was from the Birmingham Post the same day that that was on. And this shows quite a few of the items. Um, again, there's the uh, dress that they're saying she wore in Korea, which is very identical. She would buy multiple copies of the same dress. However, they did sell the shoes. Those shoes, there. And then over here we have some more of her items, including the poochie, two of the poochie tops, some underwear and a couple of other dresses. Though Marion was photographed wearing these, so that's always handy. Uh, that was... Uh, yeah, this was the Birmingham Post, and I think that was from it. And that's just people who were at the Christie's auction um, exhibit in London. I was there that day. Well, I was there that week. I don't know what day that was, but I was there. I did go to see it. And then here is the Birmingham Post again. Norma Jean lives on with fame and not fortune. Again, it's all about the Christie's auction. I said this would be a Christie's auction heavy scrapbook. That will be the next couple. Trust me, <laughs> there's a lot of Christie's auction stuff. So here we are now. We've got, this is the Sunday Express and this is an article called Making Night Marilyn. And this is um, an article on how she did her makeup 
which was truncated from a magazine article in Harper's and Queen. Because her makeup box was on sale at Christie's Auction House and was actually bought by Ripley's, believe it or not. So whether or not she actually did her makeup the way they say she did, I don't know. So this was the box, the makeup box. And there's a compact, one of her compacts and so on. Um, and yeah, so it's just about that and it's, it tells you about the auction and the preview. On the next page, we have shimmering aura that came out of a jar of Vaseline. It's because they um, said that she put a thick layer of Vaseline over her makeup. I, I can't see it myself, but there you go. And one of the dresses that was on sale. Back to the internet articles. Uh, Cocktails with Miss Monroe. This is about the auction of um, her the suit she wore to marry Joe DiMaggio. Again, because it was more of a cocktail suit. It wasn't normally what you would wear for a wedding, but Marilyn was being demure because Joe didn't like her the sexy outfit she normally wore, so she bought a very demure, demure high neck suit to wear at the wedding. And then this is from The American Way, October the 1st, 1999, we're almost at the auction. So th this is just a picture of Marilyn in 1952 flying with American Airlines. Next page is a full page advert for Mikamoto. Um, the pearls she's wearing there um, were from Mikamoto and they were gifted to her when she visited Japan in 1954 by uh, the Emperor. And she then gave them back, to, she gave them to uh, Susan Strasberg, um, daughter of Lee Strasberg, as a present. Well, she gave them to Paula Strasberg, who gave them to Susan Strasberg, uh, to Susan before she died. And sadly, Susan had to sell them in 19... Uh, I think she sold them... They sold just after Susan Strasberg's death. They were, you know, she was selling them to pay for cancer treatment because she was very, very poorly. Got no help from her stepmother whatsoever. Um, yeah. I'm not saying anything else about that. So this is the article from Harper's and Queen, a legend in her own lipstick. So we have a picture here of um, her makeup artist and hairdresser, making her up for a photo shoot. On the next side we do have a picture of the, again, which was in the other article, of her makeup box showing her lipsticks and bits and pieces of her makeup. On this page we have some photo just some general photographs of her one during the misfits one jogging in hollywood in the early 50s and one at the golden globes in 1962 with rock hudson and then on the next page we've got more of her makeup items so we've got a milton green image here uh, followed by some lipsticks a little compact which has a little thank you speech in it from the golden globes some more compacts uh, her eyelashes and, and so on so when when this all stuff all came out, it was very, very fascinating for fans to actually see because it had been hidden away since she died, all of this stuff. Um, so very fascinating. Again, that carries on the article. And then on the next page, we have uh, Memories of Marilyn by the photographer who knew her when she was brunette Norma Jean. And this is about Joseph Jasgur, who was a photographer in the 1940s. He took lots of pictures of her and claimed that Marilyn had six toes which she didn't because there are pictures of her child but she only has five toes on each foot that makes ten so not six making eleven but the pictures are great they're really old old pictures of her with brunette hair these are always great photographs to see and here's the picture he says where she has a sixth toe i'll zoom in because it does let me just uh, have a look look like if we can get it to focus i don't know if it will Anyway, is it there? There it is. Looked like a six toe, but it is just an illusion of the camera and possibly even some sand because there are pictures taken of her uh, before that that she, with the, her left foot showing that she had only five. So who knows? Now this was Woman's Journal, October 1999. Marilyn, as you've never seen her before, and this was an article publicising the third book by I think it's the third book. Or is it the second book? It would be the third book by James Haspiel, which was um, Unseen Marilyn? Something like that. Anyway, I can't really remember. Um, 
So these are beautiful photographs of her. And the book is, is nice, but it's not as, uh, the, the paper's quality is not as nice as in the other two, Young Marilyn and the, um, the Unpublished. But it is nice, and mostly it features quotes about people who knew and worked with her, which is, it, which is great. That's always nice, and there's a lovely picture of her there from Something's Got to Give. Then the next one is from the National Enquirer, Chemistry Lesson. And it's about her and Robert Mitchell making the River of No Return and saying that they had, must have had, a, they, they had an affair, according to uh, Robert Mitchell's grandson. Um, I'd have difficult to believe that just simply because it does say that if, it, you know, you'll have to read the book. As to find out whether or not it was before or after her marriage to DiMaggio. But, um, I don't know, Robert Mitchum's not here to confirm it, nor is Marilyn, so I, I take all this with a pinch of salt. So people like to say that he was selling a book. What better way to sell a book than to say, oh, well, my grandfather had an affair with Marilyn. I mean, I wouldn't blame Robert Mitchum, and I wouldn't blame Marilyn for having an affair with Robert Mitchum, because he was yummy as well. But um, I don't know if it's true. So back to an internet article here. This is again about the Christie's auction. As is the next page. I said it would be auction heavy, didn't I? Um, Ireland Sunday Independent, October the 24th, 1999. So the auction by this point must have taken place. Yeah. It was around this week anyway. <laughs> It was around this week. The next um, scrapbook you actually get, I can't remember exactly when it was. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was there, but I can't remember. But you will actually see the um, articles that came out the week of the, the, the um, auction. So um, obviously being in New York, I managed to get most of the newspapers in New York and um, with all the information about who bought what, as it was happening, you know, literally the next day, we all oh, blah, 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 and it just went on for months and months afterwards. There's quite a lot of it still. So this one's a glimpse of the real Norma Jean, Monroe's belongings, including that happy birthday dress at auction in New York next week, yeah, it was the end of the month, will show that the so-called dizzy blonde had hidden depths. So again, we've got the Kennedy dress and her wearing it, which was the highlight. It was an amazing dress to see. And those who saw it last year when it, it resold um, at, uh, I think, Julian's, was it? Julian's auction sold it. I wasn't there. I couldn't, unfortunately, I can't even afford to buy the book. Um, whereas I've got the Christie's one. Um, will tell you how amazing it is to see that dress in person. So I was quite pleased to see it the first time around. And I know that it's been bought by Ripley's, believe it or not, now, so I'm very happy about that, which means that it will be available to see. The public will be able to finally see it. Um, and currently are. It's in... At time of filming this, it was in Orlando. So it was in Florida on display. There are reports that it will be coming to the UK at some point. I just hope it's not February. <laughs> I will cry if it's February. Give it to the summer when I can uh, leave the baby with my parents and I can go to London and see it, I'll be happy. So I'm hoping it won't be for a little while yet. And her piano, which is now owned by Mariah Carey. And on this side, we have her wearing her beautiful fur coat, which is uh, a little green shot. And uh, the green, a green dress here, Norman Norell dress, and some of the poochie blouses that she absolutely adored. And why not? They're classic, they're timeless. You, could, you can wear that today and it doesn't look dated at all. And then on the back page, this is the first of the things I bought in America and I think it was from um, some entertainment magazine, I can't remember. And again, we got the lovely Milton Green picture and there's something stuck on her face, I don't know what it is. There we are, it's gone. Um, and it's just about Marilyn Monroe and the movies. Fantastic. So that one is a volume eight of 30 or so. I know, I know there's so many of them. And I'm still working on them. As I said in the previous one, I just can't get over how much stuff there is about her even now. But this, this is amazing. The, the auction one brings back so many memories because I was lucky enough to attend the auction. 
um, both days. So I was in New York for, for five days. Two days of it was auctions off, the rest of it was free time. I did see some of the places she visited and lived. I saw her apartment. I saw where they filmed The Seven Year Itch and so on. Um, but to see all the items and take photographs of all the items, to attend the auction both days, to see the Kennedy dress close up and personal was amazing. And I got to meet the author James Hasfield who knew her in the 50s. So it was a real fantastic, fantastic time. Um, I'll tell you more about the auction week when we get on to the actual auction stuff that came out when the auction was taking place, which will be in volume nine. So I hope you've enjoyed volume eight and you're not bored about my ramblings about Marilyn because uh, I do love her very much and that's never going to change. So I'll be back soon with volume nine. <laughs> yeah. I just can't stop laughing. I'm just remembering how good it was. So yeah, that's. Uh, I'll see you in uh, volume nine. You know, you guys have a great time doing whatever you're doing.